But so crazy take. I don't think the Hornets suck. So I'm a bad team connoisseur. And what I mean by that is I like to watch bad teams play basketball because that's the time I'm free, around 6 p.m. And that's about the time that the Charlotte Hornets kick off, the Washington Wizards kick off. Man, the Brooklyn Nets, they're going to kick off around that time. I know it's a jump boss basketball, but yeah, that's about the time that they kick off. Hey, today, Pistons Pacers. Hey, Cavs Raptors, that's 630. Hawks, Nets, bad teams. So I, I watch a lot of bad teams, then I watch a lot of primetime games. You mid market teams, I apologize. I don't know much about the Sacramento Kings. Indiana Pacers, I watched y'all in the playoffs, so I know a little bit about y'all, but I don't know about y'all. Houston Rockets, y'all, y'all became too good. I used to know about y'all, but. I don't know about y'all too much no more. But I'm I'm I'ma just give you my takes, bro. The Pacers. Playing team. Maybe playoff, maybe a CC, playing team. Pistons. They weren't the worst team in the NBA last year. Record wise, they were the worst team in the NBA. But what I watched, trust me, bro. They was not the worst team in the NBA last year. That, do they play? We'll get to them whenever we get to them. But the Pistons, hey, look at them to be an 11 seed, bro. Maybe they might compete for a 10 seed. But look at them to be like an 11 seed, bro. They should not be dead last. If, if the Pistons is dead last again, bro, they just need to be disbanded as an organization, bro. Bring in relegation. We're talking about expansion teams and that, hey, the NBA might need expansion teams and everything because Lonnie Walker ain't on the team and, and a lot of good players getting cut. And he's like, dog, what happened to him and, and Gary Trent had to play on a minimum? Man, send the Detroit Pistons to relegation because obviously they don't have competent NF- NBA players on their roster if they if they dealing with, with what they're going on. Magic. Hey, Magic were a team. Last year, I was like, hey, I watched a lot of Magic two years ago. <sighs> not a bad team. And then last year, they showed they're like, hey, not a bad team. Again, I think they not a bad team. Tiebreakers and everything may, kept them out the play in, but yeah, that's around where they're going. And the Heat, that's another playing team. Jimmy Butler, love Jimmy Butler, but the, the Heat are hard to beat four times. But if you just playing them on a Wednesday, yeah, you can beat the Heat. Cavs. Bro, the, the Cavs, I don't even know what's wrong with them, bro. They, on paper, are a good team. But in reality, eh, I don't know about the Cavs, bro. They they, they are a good second-round team. They they're the team you want to match up against in the second round. Like they, they're good enough to win their first round matchup, but after that, it's like, whew. That's why Donovan Mitchell be getting disrespected. Because you ain't even noticed that Donovan Mitchell be cold. Because he's been stuck in these middling environments. These if Donovan Mitchell your one. There's only so far you can go. And it's like, I love Donovan Mitchell because he can really put up 50. All right. I don't know if he can hit Jimmy Butler. I think he might be closer to Damian Lillard. <sighs> anyway, that's, they play the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors, bro. They seem like a team that don't want to win. And they purposely lost last year trying to get their draft pick. And then, nope, Spurs got it. Rob Dillingham, DMP coach's decision. That's insane. But, hey, go crazy, Brandon Jennings, bro. Whenever they give you the keys, they're going to give you the keys. <laughs> Raptors. <sighs> bro, they should... They're not making the playoffs, so I'm going to skip the Raptors, bro. Cool for them. They got left-handed people. They got Canadians. 
they got Emmanuel Quickly, who I'm a fan of, but he's like a he off brand Tyrese Maxey, bro. He great value Tyrese Maxey, great value, great value, bro. But it's it's not Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese gonna give the the 76ers 25 to 27, bro. Quickly gonna give you 18 to 22, bro. That that that's where he gonna be, and it's he cool. At least he he a better bone Highland, a worse Tyrese Maxey. Hey, we was just talking about Rob Dillingham. He he cut out that clock too. I think he closer to Tyrese Maxey than he is Bone Highland, but I feel he better than the man will quickly too. So if if if, if you picking up what I'm putting down, you putting down what I'm picking up. You feel me? You feel me? Anyway, Brooklyn Nets. They want to lose, so why talk about them? The Hawks. I'm a Trey Young fan. I feel like I'm going to watch a lot of Hawks games because they're going to be 6 o'clock type games. But I like Jalen Johnson. Zachary, Rishi say, go, go be you. They should, hopefully they're fun. If they can be fun, bro, I'm cool with it. Bucks. I don't think the Bucks are good. I just don't think the Bucks are good. The Milwaukee Bucks, I do not think they are good. I think Giannis is great. Then the rest of the team, I do not think is good. I'm out on Damian Lillard. Like... This might be the renaissance for old niggas. I'm seeing it with Derrick Henry, and he proving niggas wrong. I've seen a lot of old niggas in the NBA go crazy, bro. I've, I've seen it. Like, I've seen the Stephs. I've seen the KDs. I'm seeing all of these. Even to a lesser degree, the, the James Hardens. Like, y'all don't admit that a 20 and 10 at 34, 35, kind of insane, guys. Come on. But I don't think he better than James Harden. And I hear how y'all talking about James Harden, bro. I think Damian Lillard. Him. The Kyries. We're going to get to the Mavs later. I'm closer to aging like Kemba Walker. Where it's just like. It was there. And it's not. Bill Simmons has coined the phrase, a once a week player. I believe it was Bill Simmons, if I'm giving him credit for something he stole. Not the first white man to do that. But, hey, he a once a week player, bro. That's what he was last year. I think it's only going to get worse. And it's like, I still think Brooke Lopez is good, but... I hear NBA people talk about it who more tapped in with the NBA than I am. And they talk about Brooke Lopez and they be scratching their head. And they talk about Bobby Portis and they be scratching their head. And Chris Middleton and they be scratching their head. And I'm like, I thought these guys were all right outside of Chris Middleton because, hey, his body has betrayed him like he's been playing football or something, bro. But let's let's sit with ourselves, bro. 32, 33, 34 in the NBA is old, bro. Especially the fact that it's about to become extremely old with how young these people coming in. It's like, bro, Blake Griffin, great player. His career, 32-33, over, bro. Kemba Walker, 32-33, is over, bro. I'm listening to a lot of these player podcasts, and they're talking about aging and everything. And 32-33, bro, hey, it, it, it changes, bro. Like, they, they, Not everybody, Braun, even Chris Paul. Like, They be like, yo, nah, what Chris Paul doing crazy? What what Mike Conley doing is crazy, bro. Like, 32-33. <laughs> Guys, it's over. All right, for the most part, unless you really special. We got some special guys running around that they're making this. Rewire our brains, but let's just look at the statistics, bro. Over the course of history, bro, what it's been 33 34, it is over, bro. 32, all right, bro. We <laughs> come on, come on. 
Some of y'all was turning on Jimmy Butler saying, this, this, and that, is it? He didn't have the playoffs to remind us that he's still Jimmy, so it was like, you be hurt, you don't really be playing, you older, come on. He at that age, bro. But, okay. They playing the 70s, 60s, and they already hurt, bro. Paul George, he he, he cut her that ilk 33, 34, 35. Hey, Joel Embiid, I've been telling the 76ers to trade Joel Embiid for five years. I, I understand the talent of Joel Embiid. But Joel Embiid can only play like 35 basketball games in a calendar year. If you need him for the regular season to be great, no. If you want him to play 16 playoff games. That's if you sweep every series. And so if you want him to, the, the playoffs alone, it's like 25, 30 games. I'm tripping, it can't be 30 games. It can only go 28. It's like 24 games, come on. Uh, Joe, <laughs> it's Paul George, like, yo, I know y'all was celebrating getting rid of Tobias Harris and how terrible he is, bro, but... Have we not watched Paul George in the playoffs, bro? Come on. He got the nickname Playoff P. He gave it to himself. Why do we call him Playoff P, bro? What ha Pandemic P. There was a whole lot of things, bro. I ain't even trying to head cut. I want the 76ers to be great, bro. I was a fan of the process. I saw the vision. I was like, bro, they're doing something great. But... <sighs> They they messed up when they traded for Fultz. They messed up when they traded Bridges for Zaire Smith, bro. They 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 messed up when they had a fire uh, Sam Hinkie and put in Coangelo because the league intervened, bro. There was so much that happened that 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 messed up the process, bro. So much that happened. They messed up. Whenever they traded for Jimmy Butler, they messed up whenever they don't re-sign Jimmy Butler, bro. <sighs> they were they were what the Oklahoma City Thunder are right now. Imagine if for you you young cats who who didn't really who heard about it but didn't really see whose first memories of the NBA is uh, James Blocks Iguadala. Blocked by James. If that's your where basketball really clicks in your head, that's where it starts for for you younger folk. The process was exactly what the Oklahoma City Thunder have right now. You have stars lined up. So we thought. Plenty of draft capital where it's like this is just going to continue to feed into each other. And then just poorly mismanaged. And the thing about it being poorly mismanaged, you could see in real time it was mismanaged. Outside of the false one. The false one, there's stories about what happened. With his shoulders and his jump shot. That was the right pick. No question. If that there, there was no question. That false was the the right pick. It it was just a, tr a tragedy. Cause even even the summer league didn't look bad. I was like, ah, eh, but nah. Everything else, terrible. Absolutely terrible. Anyway, Charlotte Hornets, again, I think they, the Charlotte Hornets should be a good team. The Houston Rockets, the Houston Rockets should be an all right team. Um, I think the West might just have so much depth. They're fighting with the Golden State Warriors again for that last lead. We'll get to the Warriors later. But I believe that is the, the play-in matchup for the 10th seed. 
Warriors, Rockets. Now on a crash course for that last seed. Bulls. Hey, hopefully they're trash. Um, they should be trash. I don't know too much about the Bulls. Hope they're trash. <laughs> Pelicans. On paper, in 2K, in theory, very good team. In actual basketball, where it matters, and their officials, and their fans, and their cheerleaders, and concessions, and popcorn, and hot dogs being eaten, and, and coaches coaching, and commentators commentating on the 94 feet of hardwood, they're a seven seed. In theory, they should be like the Memphis Grizzlies, who I believe are gonna be like a top three seed, if healthy. Because I believe John ja Morant is what we believe Anthony Edwards is, but he messed up his image and the marketing aspect of him. I think John Moran's better. A, he's bigger, more charismatic in a marketable way, where it's like, ah, yeah. But I think Ja's better. Might not age well, but I think Ja's better. Why? I don't know, I just watch the games. I don't think I don't think Memphis is a good team. And whenever John Morant's not there, we kind of see it and we're like, hey, I don't think Memphis is a good team. Then he plays and it's like, yeah. Good team. Before the trade, even without Anthony Edwards, it was like, What's wrong with Minnesota? He got them straightened up. And he led them to Western Conference Finals, which is further than Ja has ever been. But Ja lost two seasons to suspension and injury. I feel like it's like Lamar last year, where it was like, he kind of missed a couple years. We kind of forgot. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, Move over, Joe Barrow. Move over, Joe. Josh Allen. All you other cats. It's me. Yeah, the Grizzlies. I think the Grizzlies are going to be like a top three, four seed. Not in the playing. If they're healthy, they're top seed easy. Oh, look, they play the Jazz. <sighs> Hopefully, I think the Jazz are finally trying to be trash. I think they're too good to be trash, but... They're going to be trash. The Suns, they got a real coach. I saw the Lakers with a real coach, and it's like, huh. Kind of makes sense. I think they're in a similar situation. Um, I think eventually Brad will come off the bench for the betterment of the team. Uh, I don't know what to expect. Katie's still a bucket. But I'm not going to doubt him until I see him lose a step, that he's lost a step. But I feel like he has lost a step. Like, hear me out. Last year during the playoffs, I was watching it, and something that repeatedly hit in my head was like, it's something I said with Bron, too. It's like, they got a cap. I don't think... KD really getting you more than 35, 37 no more. All right. Especially in the terms of like a, a playoff series. Or it's like he has to pace himself. If he comes out and gives you like 15 in the first, 
I, I'm not betting for him to go get 50. I remember that game when Braun had like 30 in the first half, trying to avoid getting swept. And then he had like two in the second half. It was like, I saw him have 30 and I was like, bro, yeah, he's, he's gas, bro. It's over. Like, <laughs> he got a tank. It's like nitrous in a racing game. He got a tank and like, he got to wait for it to boost back up and then he, he go. But if he uses it too much too early, it's like, dang, you got to pace yourself. So at the finish line, he, he take off and hopefully after he exerts all that energy, it's enough to win. But <sighs> interesting. I got a Clippers as my sleeper team. And Clippers are going to make the playoffs. They might be the eighth seed. They might be the ninth seed, bro. Tenth seed. But they're going to make the playoffs. And James Harden is going to lead the Clippers to the playoffs. And I need that to solidify his legacy. As Charles Barkley. Of this generation, bro. Because, yes, they make fun of Chuck for not having a chip. But it's never like it was his fault, bro, or they question his greatness as a player because it's understood what Chuck was. It's understood he led his team to the pinnacle. And he just lost to Jordan, and that's not held against him because they, they understand that everybody was losing to Jordan, and it's like to lose to Jordan – it's like what it is to lose to Mahomes right now. We don't crucify quarterbacks for losing to Mahomes. It's expected. Like it's tragedy. It's tragic, but it's what it is. It's expected. And James Harden took his team to the Western Conference Finals. I understand that's not the NBA Finals, but he pushed that Warriors team with KD to seven games. Yes, it was with Chris Paul, but that was their biggest matchup. Bro, the, the finals, they, they BTA to the Cavs, bro. All respect to Bron, bro. But no, no, they weren't doing, they weren't doing to those Warriors team what those James Harden teams were doing, bro. They were not pushing them to the brink how those teams were being pushed to the brink, bro. I know it was just because it said NBA finals on the court and on the jerseys that, yeah. Brown lost to this team in the finals and whatnot, but no, the real finals was the Western Conference Finals with with them Rockets teams, bro. They were they were putting brooms to the Cavs. They 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 were. <laughs> I'll call them step days, bro. They, they were, hey, the gentleman with it in five and trying to be polite. Nah, bro, Harden was taking them six. Harden was taking them seven, bro. Let's be real. Let's open our eyes. And if he takes this Clippers team, because I don't expect Kawhi, they got to let that man retire, bro. I saw that NBA tip-off at him and AE on the jump ball, bro. Kawhi got like this high off the ground. That man, that man's cooked, bro. That's my favorite player, but he cooked. There was a time when he went to the Clippers, and I, I want him to win that chip. I was like, hey, he going to be in those gold debates because it was going to be three teams, three chips, three finals MVPs. That didn't come to fruition. It's just two teams, two chips, two finals MVPs. <laughs> Hall of Fame in the upper echelons of very good. But <sighs> can't rely on that, man. I said Joel and B can't play 30 games. My boy Kawhi might not be able to play 15. All right, they they told him that they had like some degenerative knee that will never be okay. It's tragic. Cause he's amazing. And like I, I wish they could have Lonzo balled my boy. But hey. He got his paper, bro. I'm happy for him. But, dog. Yeah. It's going to be ugly. Warriors, 
I don't believe in the words, bro. Hey, congrats to Steph. More power to Steph. But I expect this team to be garbage. Not just because they lost Clay, because no, I expect Clay to be garbage too. I just don't have faith in them, bro. I don't think they're good. That's it. I don't think Steve Curry's a good coach either. So when you have a bad roster and a bad coach, and you combine those two things together, you're going to be competing with the Portland Trailblazers. That's who you play opening night. And that's who you're going to be competing with in the, in the standings. You're going to clear them. You're going to have, like, so many games over them, probably like 7, 12, maybe even 13. But the Warriors are a 40-win team to me, bro. And 40 wins in the West, this is not the Eastern Conference. Hey, prove me wrong, Steph, but every time I, I watch this team, I come to the same conclusion, not very good. Trailblazers, not very good. I don't even really want to talk about the Trailblazers, bro. I don't know too much about their team. I feel like they're going to have like three people averaging 20 some, or probably four people over like 15, 16, and you're going to be like, hey, they got some bucket getters. But and that's not a that's not a good team. I don't have I watched some of them and they they're going to be in competition for worst team in the league. With the Washington Wizards. Good God almighty. They're bad. So very bad like. I don't even I don't even know, bro, where to start with the Wizards. I when I say I'm a bad team connoisseur, I told you, I watch a lot of bad basketball, bad teams, and every time the Wizards were on, I was like, good God, they are bad, really bad, 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 and I think they should be the worst team in the league. People say in Brooklyn, nah, Washington, so very bad, and they have to play the Boston Celtics tomorrow, like, geez. That's the best team. They're very good. Very good. Very good, like, even without Tingus Pingus. Jesus, like, they host. Everybody but Al Horford can get you a dub easy. Everybody except Al Horford gonna be averaging over 15. My bad, Horford. No slander against you. I just don't think that he, he going to have to, bro. He going to average his 12.3. Good for him. But he going to shoot like 40, son. <laughs> they just be shooting all the threes. It's, it's ridiculous. And the Spurs with your mama. I have no expectations. I'm a Spurs fan. No expectations, bro. Honestly, I think probably going to be an 11 seed. We're going to be the best bad team because the 10 seed makes, makes the play in. So, you can still be a bad team, but hey, you got a chance to make the playoffs. So, but we're going to be the best bad team. What's your mama going to do some crazy stuff? I think he's going to average like 23.8. Hopefully, like over 12 boards. Maybe six assists seem high. I'm going to give him like 3.8. And then let's do like. Yeah, three blocks, two steals. Just off the muscle of being seven for five, bro. You might even average four blocks, bro. I might be selling low. It might average four and a half, but, you know, we we just going to say three. Actually, I can put, like, 3.8, bro. He going to put up some Dwight Howard numbers. I think 12 was protecting the paint. Why else I ain't talking about? I think I ain't talking about the Thunder. I think Thunder going to be a really good team. They, like I said, they they with the 76ers. They 76ers crawled so that they could run, and hopefully they do it properly without goofing. The Nuggets, I don't think the Nuggets are a good team. They're, they're just, I mean, I think they're just good. I think 
the Nuggets going to be like a four seed, a five seed. Maybe even a six seed. I don't think they're a playing team. Heck no. Nah. Too good. But I don't think they're a one seed. I know there was just a one seed last year, but eh, a lot has changed in the association. Including DeMar DeRozan coming to the Western Conference. Kings? I don't know. I think the Kings going to be good. I think they're going to be a high playing team. Will they make the playoffs? I think there's a chance that they're going to be a seven seed that misses the playoffs. But fun team either way. Timberwolves? I don't know how that team's going to work. I don't like how it looked. I'm a Dante DiVincenzo fan, though. I'm balling all your, like, Derrick Rose. Crazy. But he said it. Crazy. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I feel like it's going to, it might get a little spooky out there. But I think they're smart enough to figure it out. And then Bron and them, I think they're going to be good. I trust J.J. Redick. Going to be an interesting coach. Um, I, I watched a couple of Lakers games. Actually, I, the Lakers are probably my wa- most watched teams just because they're always on TV. And they always just seem so incompetent. And it was just so... Yeah. And the ugh ah, just wasn't there yesterday. So because they're fixing their ugh, ah, I think there's a chance. And then the Knicks... I think they're a really good team. The Celtics just might be amazing. Um, Mikael Bridges is trying to shoot like Rashad Lewis. But once he figured that out, I think he'll be cool. That or Carlos Boozer. I don't know. But I think that's the whole NBA. The Browns. I don't think they can cut him now because, like, he's hurt. But they got to cut Deshaun Watson or if that's just going to kill their cap. He's just got to be the backup. Like, you're, everyone's looking at the number and it's like, you can't deal with this, you can't deal with this because he's not on your team. No. You can't deal with this because he's so very bad. If Deshaun Watson was playing good, no one would care about his cap hit. No one cares about Lamar's. People were getting concerned about Jalen Hurts. Then he stopped turning the ball over. It's gotten quieter. Concerned about Trevor's because he's not playing good. Hey, um, not concerned about Josh Allen's. I was concerned about Justin Herbert's cap hit. Did I say Joe Burrow? No one's concerned about his. Kind of concerned about Dax because the team's not playing well. But it's like, eh. You kind of get where I'm going? If you have Jaden Daniels, and actually not a better example, no one cared about the Tampa Bay Bucks cap situation last season. When Baker Mayfield led them to the playoffs, and he also led them to a playoff win, and then almost a, a second win in the divisional. No one cared that they were eating up a bunch of dead cap space last year because they were finally taking time to take their medicine. They were like, all right, cool. We, we done pushed all this stuff back, but we doing good. So no one cared that they had all that dead cap and they were paying Baker Mayfield whatever they were paying Baker Mayfield. It was like, oh, no, we're, we're just a good team. No one cares about dead cap. Whenever the team is on the field, no one cares about dead cap. The Rams right now suck, but no one cares about their cap situation. No one's blaming the fact that they suck on their cap situation. I, 
just get the problem out the way and feel the team. Because if he was playing good, you would have figured out a way to do them gymnastics to deal with that. So, shit. <laughs> Act, find a good quarterback and it's going to hide, oh, the fact that oh, you wasn't able to buy that. You wasn't able to pay the right tackle. You wasn't able to pay a third receiver. You wasn't able to get a second running back, bro. You wasn't, you, you have holes in your, in your linebacking core. Hey, at the beginning of the season, the commander's offensive line was supposed to suck. Jaden Daniels has been playing good. No one's been complaining about their offensive line. You see where I'm going? I This idea of now we can't cut him because of X, Y, and Z, it's like, nah. That's not how it works no more. That is not how it works no more. So, I don't know, guys. Let's get serious about the Browns. <sighs> they got to let that man go. All right. So, the last topic going to be the Eagles. And <sighs> we suck, bro. But I think I know what's wrong with the offense, bro. And I kind of already said it, and I expected to see a change, but there wasn't much of a change against the Giants. And maybe it was just because it was the Giants and it was like, we can beat them. But I feel like because that's the team that we felt we could beat, it could have been a great game to try out these things. But again, we needed a multiple score win. It was like, all right, a feel good win. The pace that we play at sucks. Too slow. Snap the ball with too little time on the play clock. Need a bit more variety. We need to pick up the pace. Against the Browns, we did it a bit. We went no huddle. We picked up the tempo. We started getting going. And then I don't know what happened. We just went away from it. I said, we need to be serious. We need to have a fullback. Started using Ben Sutherland as a fullback. Cool. But again, I feel like we need a serious fullback. Not a 225 pound fullback. Maybe he's 240. Get a guy that weighs 270. Really gets to rolling. Sixth offensive lineman type fullback. Because those are the fullbacks moving. Unless you can carry Kyle Hughes check. The fact that we're not going <laughs> to, I don't think we're throwing it to a linebacker, but hey, I could be wrong. Maybe he's Taysom Hill. Let's get ourselves a real fullback. Play with some tempo. Play with some pace. Integrate that. Sometimes it can go fast. Sometimes it goes slow. But we only got one speed. We're a cattle drive offense, bro. I guess takes forever gotta have 10 play drives that's when we score gotta be 12 plays when we had that one four or five play drive where Devonte smith took a drag 45 yards i was like wow when we had a big play to aj on the streak i hate those so very much because it's like well, that's the only big plays we try to go for is the streak and it's like <sighs> Can we get some more shallow crosses where our receivers do some running? But uh, that's part of the problem with the offense. Jalen Hurts is, is becoming a problem. I watched that last game, and I felt disgusted. He's missing too many stuff underneath. They're looking for deep balls. He's looking deep to short in situations where it's like, bro, this – this play is drawn up to hit this underneath guy. And I saw him as like two, three of those. And we only had 14 pass attempts, my guy. So, <sighs> again, where is Saquon drop away from being 5-1? and one, And it's a whole different story if we 5-1 and one versus 4-2. and two. But we're 4-2. and two. Even though we're 4-2, still think we suck. 
think these are the reasons we suck. Hopefully it gets better.